description, we are, our topic is converting a space into a smart space. Um, okay, so, so we're going to be talking about the type of people that we're going to be targeting in the research on how we're going to find the interviews and what we are going to attempt to create based on what they, the feedback we get from them. Um, we all are all going to be presenting slides and the parts that we are focused on. And we'll go with uh, number one. So one of the main problems, and well, for the problem space first off, the problem space that we got would be um, turning what would be home automation and ways of turning um, spaces into, into smart homes. And essentially, we feel that this boils down to two, well, we're gonna talk about the problem space itself and the challenges and the restrictions that come with it. We feel like these restrictions, there's, there's several of them, but the two main ones are budgetary and, um, they're budgetary and legal. So the budgetary one should be fairly obvious. If you're gonna remodel, do any type of home remodeling, it's gonna cost some money, but this, the one that I wanna explain would be the legal one, which is, when we mean by legal uh, restrictions, we're, we're mainly referring to tenants, um, apartment tenants, homeowner tenants, I mean home tenants who, who are contractually obligated not to remodel their house too much. But we feel like there are solutions that can be applied to these um, these tenants who, although they can't remodel their home too much, we feel like there are other solutions that are not being explored that can apply to them, like IoT devices such as Alexa or the Echo Dot that can ultimately help integrate stuff around their home. And the next slide, we have um, our Lo and behold, our, our market segmentation matrix. Originally, we had eight uh, markets to deal with, but no, to work with, but we narrowed it down to six based on how lucrative they seemed at the time and how poignant they are. And those six are uh, apartment tenants, just like I discussed in the previous slide, and then private businesses with, with security concerns as their primary concern, landlords who want to find a quick way to improve the market value of their houses or homes, but they don't want to spend too much money on, on having a contractor come in there and messing up the wiring in their houses. Of course, of course, another type of market we can um, we can go to would be other actually home home automation companies, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Tech savvy people, DIYers are also part of it. Some people are interested in technology and or construction, and maybe they want to buy a kit or something like that. People with long term disabilities, which is of course one of the more poignant markets in our matrix. Uh, the, some of you might be wondering how can we implement, how can we sell to home automation companies? Well, it turns out that in this, uh, well, in the home automation industry, the entire market is completely uh, fragmented. What I mean by that is that, um, you know how if you were to become a, a smartphone developer, there's only three options. So I, I would keep moving because you, you, how much time does he have left? Like two minutes? Minute and a half. Minute and a half. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, we make the market segmentation, so we thought that the uh, main people we want to focus on is uh, um, the young, uh, young educated people of uh, uh, middle age, also home writer, home writers in Houston, that are familiar with technology, because um, uh, they are likely to understand the smart devices and are likely to, to have the money to spend. And also, um, we want to talk with the uh, tenants because they are going to be our customers and they are, are going to be um, the, the people that want to do the change and also they are going to have the experience and also uh, they are easily uh, reachable by our sales force. Okay, and the places where we're going to go to find people that rent are going to be really good places to be private contractors because that's that's where they live and you can probably uh, see them coming going to their car maybe getting their uh, their mail from the mailbox center or a grocery store nearby where they're doing a part of their company all right and some of the questions that we thought might be useful so we're kind of going to break it down so one and two is to kind of ask to see what kind of constraints that they may have according to maybe their Landlord might set some rules or maybe some legal issues that you may have. Um, right, we're gonna have to stop there. We're out of time. <laughs>